Okay, so I'm going to re-record everything I just recorded, and you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Uh, I just realized I, I spent like nine minutes for no reason, or like I, th I think it was like 12 minutes for no reason, explaining the tiniest little thing about what I'm about to tell you. But uh, So this is a video about how to start this simulation that I have created, right? So I already created this project a while back. I think, uh, what was it, January 4th or January 14th? So a while back now, almost a year. Uh, and I didn't think I was going to come back to this, but I noticed that there were some people in the comments saying that they were kind of confused on um, the weird spinny part <laughs> of the creatures. So uh, this part, see how a lot of them kind of start spinning over and over again. And what happens is, first of all, they'll never die, so the next round never starts. Um, and then the second thing about it is that they are getting a lot of fitness. So in the computers or in the simulations, um, I, they are the best creatures. They're surviving the longest. But clearly, we don't want this to happen. We want them to drive around the track. Uh, the second project that I've made on this, it's it's in my project list. Um, that was designed differently so that they will die if they don't get to the next checkpoints. And then the, it's an automatic, automatic way to create the checkpoints and all that, I believe, unless I'm thinking about the P5 version I made. Anyway, so long, long story short, what I'm going to tell you is how to start it so that it becomes uh, hands off, hand free, you know. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to um, like here, here. I want to start one, and I want it more smooth. Yeah. So you set them up, and when I set them up, you're gonna see some of them crash into the wall, some of them go forward, and some of them spin around. What you want to do is you want to press space when you see the one uh, a good amount of them move forward. So I'll, I'll do it right now. Right there and I did it twice to just reset the ones that died and so because some of them uh, move forward wow that was, they actually did pretty good there are they did they get it wow okay that's incredible they got it on the first try like wow the first go it usually takes 100 200 generations that's incredibly lucky like no I've done this project a lot knowing that that was probably one in 10,000, no, one in 100,000, honestly, odds um, to happen. So anyway, so you get the point, though. You're not going to get that when you do it yourself. Uh, so let's kill them and then restart. So these guys are just really good. I can put on turbo it's running in the background. But you saw what happened. Basically, when you press space, so, so all those creatures spawn. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll just do it again. All those creatures spawn, and... The ones that went all the way up here, oh, not that time because I have turbo on, so I, I waited too long. But all the ones that move up here, uh, those ones, uh, here we go, let me do that. Those ones are, got a higher score. Even though all of them were surviving the same amount of length, like they were all, they all technically spawned at the same time, so they have the same age, so they have the same score. But another part of the score is how much you move, right? And so, and how fast you move. So the faster you move, the more score you get, technically. So these creatures would, would have gotten more score, more fitness, rather, um, than the ones that were slowly turning in a circle. And then obviously more than the ones that crashed. But that's all you got to do. And then they start going. Um, I believe there might have been one more thing I was going to say. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Actually, there's a couple more things I was going to say. Uh, so I'm going to compress this down as fast as I can. I'll make this under five minutes, hopefully. Probably not. I got a minute left. Never mind. Uh, let me just say this. So two things. The two the two things you want to, like, mess with are mutation rate and then, well, like, the two features, rather. So there's mutation rate and then there's this other, cre uh, you know, current best and all-time best thing. So I'll start with the current best, all-time best thing. So right now it's on current best. So that means that it's just showing the current best. It's simulating based on the, the creature that had the current best score. And that current best score was 547.830214. So if you switch it to this, it's not gonna update the fitness score. It's not gonna update the generation or anything. But these creatures, I trained and I got these creatures, and they're not the best, but I got these creatures to follow the track decently well. And they're not going slow or anything. I know it looks like they're going slow. It's just that they are, there's all of them aren't dying immediately. So they, so if I, You'll see. If you look at them closely, when they start dying, they'll, they'll go faster and faster. Like that, right? So that's just because the, it takes a lot of calculations and it's slow on the computer to do this uh, simulation, especially in Scratch. 
So anyway, so that's that. And then if you switch it off, now you're training them. So that whole time they were just repeating the same current bet or the all time best. But now these all are training on that original super best one. <laughs> Sec secondly is the mutation rate. So here's more um, technical side of this. Um, so the mutation rate, if I set the mutation rate to zero, you'll see that they're all going to be that same best creature. So the, the one that did the best in you know generation four, or whatever, whenever that one that went flying over here, right? If you change it just slightly, then the next generation is going to be just slightly deviated from that. And because it, when you see how much they change for a little, for a little mutation rate, that means that wherever they are right now as a as a creature, they're not optimized at all. Meaning that if, if if they're able to have these tiny little bit of changes in their brain, make them react so much differently, then where they're at is not robust, it's not optimized. And so when you are able to do something like this, and it's they're going straight, that's when you know they're doing pretty well. Um, so anyway, uh, so that's that. And then what was the last thing? Oh, it was also about the mutation rate. Oh no, actually, th so there's two more things. I'm already going. I'm I'm gonna make another nine minute video. Okay, but at least this one seems a little more direct. I, I was kind of wishy washy before. I think. So uh, the other thing is for the mutation rate. First of all, they the the weights and biases in the neural networks of these creatures go from negative one to one. So the, so all the decimal points in between. And then what this does is this just changes based on a random value from negative 0 0.33 to th uh, 0 0.33 or you know all the other ones so that's what it does so it's not like it's going to shift it exactly 0 0.27 up it's going to shift it a random number down or up from 0 0.27 all the way to zero you, you get what i'm saying right um then the next thing is the key binds so uh i i think i list them but it might be better if i say it because it you know Typing is hard to emphasize what you're trying to talk about, right? So speaking is better, right? So the space button, obviously, it just kills them, right? So it just resets uh, and like goes to the next generation. The next thing is C. If you press C, it stops them and you can move them away. And it didn't change anything else. So the fitness is the same. So right now, if I move them to here, right? No matter what, none of these creatures will ever beat the fitness, not because they're crashing into the wall. I mean, that's it's because they're crashing into the wall, but because the distance they have to move and how long they survive is way smaller than that whole process they had all the way through this track. So if you want to move them, but you want them to start changing based on where you move them, you can press K. And what K does, if you look at the fitness here when I press it like that, it resets the, the weight and you can see now they're changing. So basically what it did was it, or not resets the weight, it resets the fitness. So it puts it to zero, giving these creatures a better chance to start again. Um, and I don't think they're gonna ever really <laughs> stop from this kind of thing. They're always get, yeah, and then now they got spinny again. Um, but yeah, that's what K does. Then H uh, sets the hidden, <laughs> how many hidden nodes do you want me? I did not know I <laughs> said it like that. So uh, anyway, um, what this does, oh, that's probably what, um, oh yeah, that's, that's what, I had a comment saying, why does this happen? I bet you they clicked, yeah, I know why, okay. So, so okay, this right here, hidden size. This is the number you want to uh, look at. So before it was three, and then I didn't give it an input, so it went to, to weird. So I'll put it back to three. Um, and then, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So these creatures, the bet they will. Oh my gosh, how do I explain this? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I just I, I get distracted by how long I've been recording. Um, and I, I, it's not really a big deal, but I know that audience retention is um, goes down a lot. Wow, that guy <laughs> freaking killed it. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice. Okay, anyway, so the hidden size is basically how much potential they have uh, as, as a creature. So let's say you have a really round track. Let's, let's restart these guys, so at least there's a lot of them going. Um, or at least a few of them. So... Uh, Let's say you have a really perfect track, just a round track like you would see it at high school, right? Or a college. Uh, it is not that hard to figure out how to avoid the walls in those cases uh, because there's no jagged edges. There's nothing really different about this, the track um, for each part of the track. It's very similar all around. 
So um, having a hidden size of one, or well, no, having a hidden size of like three would probably be best. Uh, but if you have a track that's really complicated, clearly these guys, it's not too complicated, but it's more complicated than the example I just gave. Um, uh, hidden size three is fine, but the more and more you, you go up, the more you want this hidden size to go up. So I'd say if one of the most complicated tracks that this generator makes, probably something like that one that just popped up, um, popped up a second ago. Let me try to get one. Um, super jagged, like super crazy jagged. Yeah, like something like this, you would probably want something more like five or four. So you just set that, right? I can just set this five. What it means is that the brain is a lot bigger though. It is a lot bigger because now there's two more extra nodes attached to all the original three, the first three nodes and then the, the three output nodes or the four or whatever I have as the output nodes. So, I'll, you know, it even though it added two, it added more like, I think, well, let's see. It would have added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like somewhere around like 16 or something. Uh, more weights and then and then the biases as well and then the nose so all of that so a lot more numbers right um, and then uh, let me just okay another thing about the hidden size is that the best creatures were trained on hidden size three so if you switch it to best creatures it's just gonna break it's just gonna break 100 percent like it won't it might not do this sometimes they just go really fast sometimes they don't move at all but you you have to have it on hidden size three because they were trained on hidden size three and now you see they, oh, that was a cool effect. Anyway, so yeah, that's it, that's it. Video done now, boom.